Welcome to Telco Bridges Pro SBC Tech Train Module 160, covering Pro SBC Encryption Pack with SIP over TLS and SRTP. So let's dig in. Oh, it's a TLS. It did, it did just one, one more layer of uh, configuration for a SIP TLS. It will encrypt the uh, SIP messages. It needs to run over TCP. It requires certificates. Uh, and we support it since uh, version 3.1. So if you have 3.0 still, it's uh, TLS is not supported. I right, saw so, uh, one one regular, let's say, scenario is is uh, SIP RTP to uh, SIP SRTP. So you have uh, maybe a private network which you're not too worried about encryption, and then you have public network, and of course you want to protect, so you can you can do that. Right, to configure uh, TLS, you would need to have a, a uh, local key and a certificate. You need to add those certificates to the SBC. Uh, this will, it will be the same. In a OnePlus One system, they will be replicated. Uh, keys are not saved in the database. Right, so that's one other thing I should have added in the other slide. Uh, you, they will be on the file systems locally, so if you want to use another system, then it has to be new keys or, or you need to copy those keys to the other system. Uh, create a TLS profile and add the TLS transport server that you can use after that in your network access points. All right, so uh, to create your certificate, well, it's, it's a regular uh, SSH certificate, right? So if, if you know already how to do that, it's fine. But uh, otherwise, you can follow instructions we have on our wiki. Uh, if you can create a new private key or use one you already have. Uh, create a self-signed certificate, or maybe you already have one that is, is signed in the network, so you can, uh, you can use that. And uh, uh, CSR. Okay. These files need to be put in a specific uh, directory in the system, okay? Here are the commands that are uh, taken from the wiki. So to create a new private key, to create a CSR, and to create a self-signed certificate, so you have these commands. And now, and then you will end the process with three, three files. These three files, you need to load in the certificates section. Uh, you need to uh, load your uh, local certificate, okay, the one that is CRT, the self-signed certificate. Uh, you just paste it here in the, uh, in the window that uh, is uh, being opened. Then, You need to add the remote certificate. So these are the ones that the other end will be using. All right, so you need to import those CRT file inside your uh, certificates. They, here it says trusted, does it show the others? Okay, there's uh, three modes. One is the local, so that's the one we added. That's the one we lo uh, use uh, locally. Trusted is the remote one, and there's another mode that is called intermediate. Okay, so I don't have any example on intermediate. Only trusted and local. So then uh, you need to create a uh, TLS, a SIP TLS profile. So in your TLS profile, you will say, do I force to have Peer authentication. So my guess is yes, right? We should we should force uh, to have uh, certificate verification. 
Then you put your local certificate, so you could have added more, but one, one is enough. And then you need to add all the uh, remote certificates that this TLS profile can access. All right, so each destination you will want to reach, you will need to put the certificate here. Okay, so you just need to, uh, if you have more here, you just push them here. Okay, then in the uh, SIP configuration, <coughs> in the SIP configuration, you need to select here TLS. And when you select TLS, there's a new option that appears, which is the TLS profile. All right, so you could have only one profile and put all your, your certificates in there or have uh, limited uh, amounts of certificates per profile. Okay, the other parameters are the same, right? This is where you choose UDP, TCP, or TLS. This is where you choose your local IP interface. And this is where you choose your local port. So TLS by default, 5061, uh, that is what is being used. Okay. You guys don't support Let's Encrypt? Let's Encrypt. Uh, I think, yeah, I think we can use that. How do I install it? Oh, you want to install them? Um, okay, okay, I switch me. No, no, we don't we don't do that. Don't do that. So you have to purchase the certificate. Uh, in the uh, certificate section, if you click on status, you will see uh, the these certificates, right? If they are valid, all right. So we can see this here. That's almost the only thing you can see here. Um, in the uh, NAP status, well, you will see if the remote NAP answers correctly because uh, we will send the certificate and they will answer. If it's accepted, then it's going to go up. NAP status here. Okay. Uh, in the call trace, in the call trace, we will see SIP TLS. And it's totally decrypted in the call trace. Right, so you don't, uh, you see the, the SIP message uh, decrypted here. And the only way to distinguish if it's a SIP TLS call, it's this. SIP TLS. Otherwise, it says only SIP or SIP UDP, SIP TCP, and SIP TLS. You can use our tool to get the signaling trace, which is called TB SIG trace. I will show that later, but mostly what it does, it gives you a SIP trace that can be viewed in Wireshark. And if we use our tool, TB SIG trace, the SIP message is decrypted. All right. And if you look in Wireshark, you will see that it's a trace over UDP, not a trace over TLS, because otherwise you don't see it. All right, so we convert it into UDP so that you can see it. So, kind of like with the, the Void Monitor and Homer, maybe this would all be encrypted then, right? With Void Monitor? Yes. Yeah, or yeah. some of the third party yeah. 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 we wouldn't be able to see any of this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're decrypting and encrypting live with yeah. the certificate. Yes. Right? Yes, exactly. Which is why I really want it to work from here. <laughs> <laughs> so I can get all the stats from there, right? Yeah, not one So it's one place yeah. I can see. I can see the spoken hub of everything happening from the SPC. Yeah. But where Shark has a feature to load the certificate and decrypt, but I'm not sure. Yeah, Void Monitor is basically a glorified wire shark. It's yeah, just so sitting there. Yeah. You know, yeah. Exactly. So so if you if you get a capture from somewhere or if you use T B router, right? But because T B router is the SBC function, which is very low level. So when you capture the TB router, it's still not decrypted, the TLS. It's decrypted only at higher levels. So if you get the TB router trace, 
Then you can see the SIP TLS messages, but you can only decrypt them if you add the keys, as Dragos is saying, in yeah, the that's Wireshark. That's a good point. Like, you can see the SIP calls happening there, but you can't see any of the RTP data. It's, it's, you know, okay. The media, if the media is not visible to, to Void Monitor, it's only, only the SIP calls coming through. You can, see, you can see each SIP request that comes through. Okay, I thought Vault Monitor had the RTP as well. It, it does, it's just not able to pick it up off your, off the way your NICs are somehow. Like ah, okay, 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 yes, 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 you know, you're right, right, okay, them, I understand. Okay. Is, is the management of the NICs is causing that interference where the media is invisible at the NIC level. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Right, because TB router is sitting between the NIC and, yes. yeah. Yes. So we need to tap in at the TB router yes. level. Because they're trying, to, they're trying to look at it right at the NIC itself and, and the media is not there. It's never going through the nick. Yeah, exactly. That's, <laughs> that's why they don't yeah, see that's it. Why, yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly what they <laughs> It doesn't go. It goes in TB router. That's why I say we need the TB router connection to Vite Monitor to make it work. Yeah, yeah. Would be possible. That's, uh, if, if you use the keys there in uh, Wireshark and you have the TB router trace, which has all the low level stuff, well, the Wireshark is able to decrypt the TLS and also the SRTP because it has a SIP message or you can see the SRTP exchange and decode that. So it's really, uh, really nice uh, to have this as well. So you need to have the keys. You need to have the keys. So in your lab, it's super. When you get in the real world, it's not so easy. <laughs> Yeah. Well, uh, one of the reasons we did it is for uh, yeah. it's for um, uh, teams. Teams. Oh yeah. Teams right. use SIP. Yeah. Yeah. We wanted we wanted interlinked between offices and secure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's they would like the whole thing secure, but we definitely want between site to site to be secure. Makes sense. Um, so that's that's our primary focus. Yeah. On it. It's like it's like. like yeah, that's the best, because uh, then you have control of both ends, it's, it's yeah. better to, uh, you can see everything. Yeah. Can it use a, uh, if you have to purchase a cert, can you use a wild card cert on it? A wire card? Wild card. No. Wild card cert, I don't know. So you should, if you've got all subdomains, you've got to support wild card, you can't have a certificate for every domain. Let's try it. <laughs> I don't, I never, I don't know. <laughs> I've never tried it. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, I would say it's regular processing of, of, of certificates. So I think it should work. But, uh. If my PDX is encrypting, I don't need a certificate here. Or do I still have a certificate here? If my phone is registering with my PDX. Oh yeah? Mm -hmm. and, my, and PDX does have certificates. And I'm using TLS between my phone and my switch. Mm. I think you'll still need it. I think you'll still need it. Because otherwise, if, if we don't, if we cannot decrypt the SIP message, then we don't know where to send it. We don't even know it's a register, right? So how are you going to handle that? So the phone comes in a register, you're going to give the phone your certificate, and then you're going to establish a continue the registration? With another, with another certificate? Yeah, with another certificate, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, you mean expired, uh, expired certificates? Well, I think you can add all of them here. I don't know if you need to delete them, but you. Yeah, I haven't seen. I haven't seen how to delete them. Maybe you can do that manually. Where is it? Is it rebooting the SIP stack when you change the certificate? Yeah. Rebooting the SIP stack? No, no. 
Oh, I didn't take the snapshot. We can check. Oh, maybe I'm missing uh, something here. Yeah, maybe we can delete or or update it. I don't know. We can check uh, in the in the system after. Uh, yeah, TCP part stuff to check for troubleshooting. TCP part, remote part. Uh, if no trace, so if you're not able to get the SIP trace, then it's something maybe more basic in the in the configuration. But if you get the SIP trace, then then you can have any. Well, start probably with the call trace, but you can have SIG trace or TBA router trace to get the rest. Okay. So uh, the handshake, well, that's the regular handshake, and then the LO is for the uh, the uh, TLS, the certificate stuff. So I exchange the certificates here. It's all done automatically. You can see it. You can see it in the trace. Now in the call trace, we won't see this, but in the signaling trace, you can see these messages and see if it's processing normally. Cipher also, type of cipher that's being used. Okay, so TLS, but the rest with TLS is the same, right? There's nothing, uh, it's just uh, an exchange of certificates here. SRTP. All right, so here we only have it on 3140. So right now it's in beta, so we have like Four customers, I think, that are uh, testing the SRTP. Uh, so we will have this soon available to everyone. There's new keys generated on every call. We saw the SIP TLS, the keys need to be predetermined. But in SRTP, it's in the SIP messages. So we don't have to do anything for that. It's done automatically. Uh, both directions must use the same cipher, but different encryption keys. Again, this is done automatically, so we don't, we don't really bother about this. Uh, all the encryption, decryption of RTP packets are done by TB router. All right, so it's right down uh, uh, with TB router that does this processing. Okay, so it doesn't go through the kernel up to the user space back down. Right, so it's very efficient to do it at the very low level. Of course, it does take some resources from TB router. So you saw we had uh, one TBA router for five interfaces. Well, maybe if you try, try to do five interfaces of SRTP, maybe it's not going to be enough. Okay? So you'll be overloading the TBA router. Maybe we need to add one more core to support that. Okay, so when, we, when you send the um, okay, when we send the SIP TLS message, we uh, suggest some uh, ciphers to be new. So we support right now uh, only the first one, if I understand well. Or we use it on outgoing calls. We use always only this one. But I think we support all of them, but only the first one on outgoing calls. All right, but uh, again, if both sides can support this one, it's fine. All right. And then uh, the configuration. Here in the new version 3.140, we have a new option just below the ones we saw this morning. RTP security mode, so then you can force it to be secure instead of, I think it's unsecure, the other one. So unsecure would be the default mode and secure the uh, SRTP. Here, uh, yeah. Oh, it's just, uh, it just uh, some messages that we see in the, uh, the engine. Uh, Toolpack engine will check some things, like for example, you're using secure RTP, but you're using uh, uh, UDP for SIP, so it's pretty much use, well, not use, completely useless, but not so good to, uh, to do that. So there's gonna be some checks here. In the call trace, what you will see is, yeah, so here 
it's the S here. So usually it's RTP AVP, but here it's SAVP. So you will see that it's uh, encrypted RTP, but in the call trace, right, you just don't really know, but you will see the list of ciphers that were uh, exchanged and also the keys here, or part of the keys, probably. In the 200, okay, yeah, also. So this was the, uh, I don't see it here, this was the invite, this is the 200, okay. Uh, what else on SRTP? Yeah, so um, SRTP, the only way, or, or even RTP, the only way to get it, it with, is with a TB router capture. So when we get a TB router capture, then we need to look at the SIP TLS matches and be able to decrypt them. So we still need to have the keys for this. Like we said, it's not always available. But then after that, you can see it in Wireshark if you have uh, access. Uh, in Wireshark, you still see the SAVP here to tell you it's a secure conversion. Uh, this is the same thing. Ciphers and keys that are being exchanged. This is the same thing as well, but in Wireshark. Okay. Yeah, so if it is encrypted, then it will look like this, right? So it's not, not decoded. But if it's decoded, it will be the regular uh, RTP we see usually. What else is there? No, you do a lock when you're set. You decrypt it when you're sending it to, to law enforcement or you're sending it encrypted? It depends on how the lawful intercept is configured. Okay. So maybe if it's uh, if the lawful intercept is SIP, then we will have to decrypt it. Okay. If it is TLS on there, well, we'll just forward the SRTP wow. there. Yeah. Um, I'm stuck. TB router. Um, yeah, for SRTP specifically, since it doesn't go up out of TB router, then one way to see some information about the SRTP is here. But the one that will configure this is Toolpack Engine. So maybe Toolpack Engine has some information. For example, well, this is in TB router. So it has some information about the resource, okay? If you, and when you look at the logs of the system or if you use the tool I showed you this morning, uh, if you see low delay resource, low delay resource, it means a, a connection inside the system without transcoding, okay? So that means a connection that goes directly from one end to the other. And uh, this example is uh, RTP to SRTP and which uh, cipher it's using and encryption key information. Okay. So you can see stuff in DB router as well uh, about this. Most likely though, though, you just need to click on secure RTP, activate configuration, and that's it, right? So this particular NAP will have uh, SRTP now on it, okay? Simple enough. All right, now you're ready to take on encrypted communications. Time to move on to call routing in module 205 by clicking in the box over here.